one of my favorite teachers um, was when my during my like grade twelve year, I decided to become a class clown during physics class, but she was amazing. Locker. <laughs> Yeah, right. She was amazing. She loved I, I, I still remember this. It, I remember one day we were talking about toys. So Lego's cool, but she likes Slinky. I remember this very this great detail. Like she really, really dug dug the slinky. So it was funny because I could crack her almost at will. She actually towards the end of the year she finally was like, Okay, I gotta be the adult in the room. I have to be the adult in the room. But I knew it, like, and I can even sense it then. I was a struggle for her because she, the sense of fun, the sense of fun that was, I should have tried more towards the end of the year in terms of the actual subject matter. But the the actual concept of, you know, just um, cracking her was always a little bit of enjoy. I, I remember uh, one of my buddies that recommended me to draw Akshay on there. I would also try to crack him as well. And I'm sure, yeah, you've had students like this. They're just like, can we crack you? Can we? Those are fun. They're always my favorite. <laughs> yeah, of course, of course, because honestly, that's the um, that's the uh, those are the best because they're, they're engaged, right? They they are completely engaged with what you're doing, so you know you're you're making an impact. And I'm sure they've got. I'm sure you got a couple of story. If you really wanted to, tell a story about one of your students that cracked you. That'd be great. Like, cracked me as in, yeah, because I'm usually the weirdest person in the room. That's the thing, right? And so the, I, I've had students that I was warned about, oh, you, know, you don't want that one in your class. You know, I was teaching high school, especially, and I was like, why not? And I ended up doing, um, it was an English 10 class, and it was, I believe it was 14 boys and two or three girls. Like, it was interesting and, and they're like oh these particular show you're worrying about those and i remember finding that they were the most fun and like it took some time and it took some like different and i ended up because with uh with english and we had the choice to do um it was lord of the flies or um to kill a mockingbird and i mean both good but the fact that i had like almost all boys in this class i'm like we're going lord of the flies and so yeah it was it's funny because they yeah, breaking me is not, it's, it's funny. It, they try sometimes, but usually they give up pretty quick because they know that I'm. You roll with it. I'm cool with it. Like they, I ended up, I would get emails if, for that class, especially too, because it was, um, again, so many boys and a lot of them really didn't, weren't, weren't big on English class or anything like that. And within two or three weeks, I had a couple emails from parents saying like, what did you do to my kid? He was reading a book. And I didn't like ask him to, and I didn't threaten him. And it was like a school book. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> well, well you, you were engaging and you, you, they respected you. It, it's it, the thing about, I think the thing about um, the real secret to being a good teacher to kids is winning their respect. Once you have it, they'll go along with whatever it is you do. Right. That, that's, the, that's why substitute teaching is such a nightmare because it's like, you, cause they know you're gone. They know you're gone after a couple of days, so it's like, or, at, or maybe a week at most, and yeah. you're like, I can break you. It doesn't matter because you're going to be gone, and yeah. you're, you're going to be decimated. So that's why I think substitute teachers like hate grade six and seven in particular because they that's that age where they really don't care. Yeah. Right? It's like, oh god, I got to deal with them. So you, I, you're right, I got to deal with this, and yeah. so you got you got to come up with a plan. I have to get yourself to engage them quickly or you just you're, you've lost them for the whole duration and it's a terrible time only but, yeah. everything they can too because i yeah when i first started teaching i did some subbing too and again that was another thing because they try and you don't know their names so it's a little bit harder you know to kind of because you can't be like you like you because you have no idea who they are because you've never met them before but usually Again, it, it, the junior high is, is an interesting um, age group. And I just remember going in there and they do try, like they try to move around, they try all sorts of things, but I just, because I was laughing and I go in there just, you know, hey guys, what are we doing? And I, I almost, there's no, I, I have authority, but it's more like, a, I always go in like we're a team, like, you know, what's going on? Like, why don't you guys help me out? I'm new here, like, and you know, when they do something silly that they're they're assuming that you're going to yell at them for, I guess they must get yelled at. I don't. I laugh. I laugh, <laughs> and 
And so I think right off the bat, that kind of catches them off guard and that they, you didn't yell at me, what? You know, I'm um, maybe, because um, they're probably more mature than I am. I always tell my grade two, it's that I'm, I'm teaching French origin grade two right now. And I tell them, um, you guys are probably more mature than I am. You guys remember stuff better than Madame does. So <laughs> yeah, they kind of, they like that oh, too. It's like, make me look good. That just make me look good and I'll, I'll make you guys look good. And I'll be like, sweet, right? 